So a Seattle comedy club mm-hmm. uh, booked some pretty notable guys. Yeah. And then canceled the shows because of pressure from the Seattle clientele, I guess. And the comics, uh, Jim Florentine, Kurt Mesker, and Louis J. Gomez, and Dave Smith, all comics that have... Were, were they on one show together? No. Okay, so they're not on one show together. They are at individual shows. Correct. And they canceled all their shows. All of these weeks are canceled because the club said they're getting uh, feedback from the local uh, patron saying these guys are not acceptable. Their comedy is not acceptable. And the club canceled them, which, listen, from the perspective that the club should be allowed to do what the club wants to do from a business perspective, obviously... Okay, is it the right move? I don't think it is. I don't. What, what, I mean, I've seen Jim Florentine's act. Mm -hmm. What is so controversial about Jim Florentine's act? Uh, You know, listen, I don't think any of these guys, Lewis and and Dave Smith are, are edgy. Kurt Metzger's edgy. Jim is edgy. But, you know, controversial. Right, that's what I, I don't understand. Like, I, I know I've seen all of them, mm-hmm. but I'm really familiar with Jim. And I can't imagine, I mean, he might not be your cup of tea. Correct. But it's not as if he's saying, who is, is it Shane Gillis that is just had the big brouhaha with Saturday Night Live again? In 2019, he not, had a brouhaha. No, but they just said he was bringing out his, like that one really controversial joke that he has. Um, well, about... But, it, it, so he, he hosted this week. Yeah, he hosted this week. And, yeah. Yeah, and he uh, he used the uh, R word in his monologue. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that I understand that if you had an issue with that, but I don't think any of these guys. Let me say this about having an issue. Right. In general. Uh-huh. You are tuning into Saturday Night Live, and you got a remote control. Click. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Right. Now, this club essentially catered to what I'm going to term as maybe perhaps what some people might call the uber woke crowd. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with tuning into any crowd that specifically is you alienate some other portion of your crowd. Right. Now, one of the things we've always done at the club is we've always said we're going to book everybody. Yeah. And you're going to come and you're going to enjoy it. And if you don't like it, you don't have to come again to see that show. But there's always a show for somebody on the calendar. Yeah. You know, comedy is like any other art form. Some people look at Picasso and go, the guy's got no clear lines. Right. And some people look at Monet and say, the lines are too clear. And I just exhibited just a little touch of my art. But the thing is uh, that, you know, this, they called them crass performances. Mm -hmm. Uh, Look, you knew what you were booking. Right. And I think the club, should either replace those weekends for the guys or pay them. Well, I, I guess what I was a little... I, so I seen when Jim Florentine posted about yes. being canceled. And I was surprised that the club came out and did that. Because instead of saying that we just have like a booking issue, mm-hmm. we need to move some people around. Right. They came out against this and saying this. And to me, those are fighting words. In the comedy business. Like, those are fighting words. Like, you're coming out and you're telling six, sorry, six comment comics or five comics, we're not going to use you because our, 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 what is it saying? Our neighborhood's ethos. Right. Are, it, it, it doesn't align with our neighborhood's ethos. But I, I don't know. Wouldn't it have just been easier? Just to not do that. But you're coming out now. The comedy club is coming out now. Like, in a in a polite way, fighting against, I don't know, the rest of the comics. Because now it's it feels like a huge censoring. You would have to be very cautious in taking a date yeah. from this club. Because you'd have to worry that something you said got you canceled. Listen, yeah. I've always been a proponent of free speech and a proponent of saying... Your speech may cost you opportunity. Right. Right? Now, you book Kurt Metzger, Jim Florentine, uh, Louis Gomez, and, and Dave Smith, Louis J. Gomez and Dave Smith. Uh, shame on you if you don't know what you're booking. Right. Now, I think the club would have been better off to say, these guys are edgy. 
right. on the website. They're edgy. If you don't want to come, don't come. Mm-hmm. And we've done that. We had X-rated Otto and George. Right. Which, listen, if you're a Mormon, you'd be out front doing however Mormons protest. You'd be out front doing it. Uh, maybe not the Mormons. Yeah, the Mormons are clean. The Mormons would have protested. Right. Oh, my God. That should not take a hint. Yeah. Uh, so the Mormons and the, and the religious groups would have been against Otto and George. Mm-hmm. Well, we put it on the website. This is X-rated. For a while, I took the idea of doing Blue Sunday. Just dirty, blue comedy. The beauty of comedy is it should be for everybody, meaning there should be a, a an entree for you. Now, not right. every entree is for you. Well, and we booked... I don't know if you want me to say her name or not, but I, I just will. We booked Michelle Wolf in the Bridgeport Club Ugh. thinking that it would be a shoe in mm-hmm. because it's a democratic s- city. <coughs> and she leaned a little left. And she leans left. Well, she had done the road, the, um, she, she had, had hosted the, the um, that correspondence big dinner. correspondence dinner and she had roasted Donald Trump <coughs> bad. Mm-hmm. So we thought it was a good booking. Now, Vinny and I, we never, we only, book what we think is going to work we don't like our political views we never share our political reviews we never do it we just book what we think will be good fits for certain audiences we got trolled heavily the, the on that like they i was them. shocking we got trolled heavily and it didn't sell as well but we didn't pull the date no. because that was that was her that was her art and it like we but we got trolled and we got trolled we paid her we got yeah and um and she you know michelle wolf's a funny girl yeah cup of tea not a cup of tea right what what i find interesting in this case uh is that so peter wanted to know if we've ever canceled someone do and what would it take for us to cancel someone listen i'm not saying there is never going to be an environment where we would have to say put the brakes on that show right obviously Comics are human beings. Could you do something so heinous that in that moment we need a little distance? It could happen. This is a long time away. None of these guys did anything other no. than what they've always done. Right. So you should have never booked these guys. No. We booked Louis J. Gomez. I take credit for giving Louis J. Gomez the name of that show. Right? The Not the deplorable. I called it the... Um, the depraved. Huh? The depraved. The depraved. The depraved. Yeah. That was my... And you know what I'm upset about? Louis J. Gomez never said, hey, Vinny, here's a $250,000 check for giving me a successful name for the tour. Two fifty, dollars Louis. That's what I'm looking for. So, uh, But I also think, though, the only way that you really, for us, is if something significant happened. Correct. And whether within the club or something that we would say, hmm, Got to got to think about that alignment, but not about what their comedy. When Margaret Cho had that, I think un- Cho Cho. Okay, Margaret Cho had that unfortunate incident at the club, and it landed on TMZ and everywhere else. Everywhere else. And then Jerry Seinfeld came back with her to do like a do over because everyone can have a bad day at work. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, those are all humans are fallible. You know, like, yes, everyone's going to have an issue, but this is just based on. Their comedy alone, which feels vastly different than anything else. I think that's the most succinct thing uh, you've ever said. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, of course, I do with succinct. But everything else, you're right. This decision was based on the same information they had when they booked from the beginning. Yes, and that's what feels so us versus them Yeah, kind of thing, where you're setting a tone now for any other comic. Right has to think about whether they're going to take a date with you now. Well, you also have to say as a comic, everything you're saying is spot on. Um, also as a comic, now I got to go on stage and go, I got to worry about the the ethos of the neighborhood. Yeah. Because any kind, and I have plenty of material that would go against the ethos of that woke neighborhood. Because like you say, Jim Florentine is edgy and funny, but it's not offensive. No. Luis J. Gomez is not offensive unless you want to be offended. Yeah. And Dave Smith is is he just did Connecticut. Yeah. And they love them. Yeah. Well, that's why it's it's so it's such a startling decision. Like if you were if that was your stance, if that was truly your stance, I just don't understand why they didn't call me like, hey Jim, you know what? We have a booking issue. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to move this date. We'll find you something else in two thousand twenty five. Yeah. Like. 
it would have been a hundred times easier. Yeah. But now they should have lied. They should have lied. I don't understand. <laughs> I just don't understand because now if you're a comic, you're going to say, well, what kind of censorship am I going to face? Exactly. But in this case, Vicky, the reason they didn't lie is that also goes against the ethos of the neighborhood. <laughs> it's a very honest neighborhood. Your dog is shitting on my lawn. I hate it. I just wanted to be honest. That's the, our ethos. Uh, Listen, I think the club made a mistake. And those those five comics are all very, very funny and gifted gifted comics. And uh, you see Tacoma Comedy Club stepped up and took the dates right away. Oh, no, I didn't see that. Tacoma Comedy Club, which has been around forever, a very well-respected club, stepped up and took the dates. Uh, what is the name of this club, Peter? Uh, it's the Capitol Hill Bar Slash Comedy Club. Well, there you go right there. It's a bar slash comedy club. They're not a full-time comedy venue. They don't have the love of what we do. All right, and that's the thing. Tacoma is a comedy club. So are they talking about a couple bar patrons sitting around going, we don't like them. Get them off your, your calendar. But these particular bar patrons sit around, even when they're playing drinking games, their drinking games involve uh, discussions <laughs> of wildly popular uh, progressive ideas. That's You have to try and one-up the progressive right. idea. You know, I'll say this last thing about comedy in general. And I don't know how it is or why it is, but boy, people take comedy so seriously. They really do. Uh, you know, I've said it a hundred times. You shouldn't listen to comics if you're trying to get your your moral compass adjusted. No. Because most of us are failed. I'm a failed human being. You are not. I certainly. You are not. I am. And I don't mind it. I failed up. No. I you are up. not. The thing that, the thing with you being a comic is that when we're out in our everyday world, you think a lot of things are okay to say and it's just not. <laughs> it is. And I have to censor you all the time and you get super pissed off. You would have done well. You get super mad at me. Like, what? oh, I can't say anything. You would have been done well in a fascist society. No, where no. Because you think it's already uh, al always okay to speak your mind and it's just I not. I do. I really do. It's just not. And in your society... It's freedom of acceptable speech. And my society is freedom of speech. I think in the majority of society, people understand that you don't always need to speak your mind. That's because they're assholes. Yes. I mean, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, Nikki, when you, you know, we've talked about this so much in the podcast, I don't want to do it anymore, but when you speak your mind, you can walk away from an environment and people don't go, I wonder if Vinny's mad. And that's better. Yeah. I wonder if Vinny's upset. You know, we have a, a, an employee now thinks I, I can't, thinks I hate him. Yes. Because I corrected him twice. Oh, my God. I want to go back to your crib. Stop. And find out how no. your parents wiped no. your mouth Stop. wrong when you burped. Stop. Because, nope. my God, something happened. Stop. Noah, for the longest time, would give so, Noah, in the beginning, were you not a little more sensitive to my direct criticisms? <laughs> um... I have I have grown a thicker skin. I, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even say I would know how to not handle it handle you better, but I I know where it's coming from and it helps a lot more. Right and yeah. and do you do you ever get upset when I tell you no? What you're a complete and utter disgrace, a screw up, an absolute zero. Does that ever upset you? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't need no. And, and Peter, I think you might be on the same page. I'm not sure, but I, I've worked more closely in the podcast environment yeah. with Noah. I think what I said to Noah a long time ago was, Noah, this is a two-way street. When I say something that stinks, I want you to tell me, right, Noah? Yes. Yep. And, and I tell him, don't sugarcoat it. Now, it hasn't happened yet. But mm. if it ever happens, I'm If it was going to on that rare moment. <laughs> You're fired! Yeah. Everything I say is brilliant! 